So it's been 12 months since I first started developing my game. How far have I gotten? And I put out a video a couple of weeks ago about my dice mechanics thought that I had. It's based around motorcycle gangs, or at least how they are perceived in pop culture. Uh, but if I'm going too fast to speed, maybe I can't make that sharper turn, or maybe I can risk it, but I'm, I'm adding to my distraction levels and so forth. You don't go out on a motorbike and just, like, you are thinking all the time. Like, that, that is just how it is. The initial video where those clips actually come from is much longer and much more in depth. Um, it does feel very, very rambly watching it back. I actually watched it back recently, about a week and a half ago, uh, when I thought it might be time to actually do a proper update. Um, unlike that original video, this is eventually actually going to be public content. Um, that was very 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 early but make no mistake like this is an idea that i've had for a very long time when i say nine or ten years i mean it's been nine or ten years since i first had this idea and it was always going to be a motorcycle gang warfare game that was always the intent of it um but i just i never actually started doing it it was something that i was going to do eventually yeah i know i will get to it my mum used to call me a gunner because I was always going to do this and going to do that. Well, mum, I'm doing this. Um, but like I said, that initial video is very rambly. Um, and truth be told, this is the second or third time that I'm filming this for exactly the same reason. Um, this is very much off the cuff, uh, very much off the cuff, very much just my thoughts. Um, in that initial video... Which, truth, like, truth be told, I don't think even our Patreons have watched all of it. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I don't think all of them have seen it. Because thankfully our Patreons, like, to a large extent, they, they, they support us because they want to support us. Um, not just because they want to get early access to stuff. Uh, which is lovely. I mean, by all means, I would love everybody to join our Patreon, but that's not what I'm here for today. Entropy City at that stage was two or three weeks prior to that, I'd had this idea of a brand new dice mechanic. Well, not so much brand new. It was a new dice mechanic for me. I hadn't seen it done this way. Um, basically, I'm using D10s, uh, and you're essentially playing blackjack, but with dice. Um, at that stage, a friend had recently made a comment, and I've, I've referenced this a couple of times, uh, where, well, that doesn't work because the odds aren't the same with dice versus cards. Uh, and that was actually kind of the point at the time um, because one of the mechanics is that if you bust, like in Blackjack, the bike crashes. Uh, and at that particular point in the game, that would mean that the miniature was gone as well. That isn't necessarily the case anymore. Over the last 12 months, there has been a lot of writing uh, more than my little snippet teased. Uh, my rule book has been written and then updated, written and updated. Very, very early on, there was a couple of things that I deliberately wasn't touching. I'm figuring this out as I go. And when it comes to trying to playtest and implement changes, I want to be able to listen to the people uh, that are following me on this journey. And whilst not all of the feedback I get will be stuff that I want to take on board, I don't want to just not do that out of stubbornness either. Um, because I'm very, very aware that in the tabletop space, I'm a nobody at this point. Um, I mean, sure, I have a YouTube channel. It's a very small YouTube channel. Um, it's a channel I'm very proud of, especially given that it's done on a shoestring budget. One of the big motivations early on was the fact that I actually am a motorbike rider. 
Like, legitimately. There's my leather jacket. There's another one in there, too. My helmet's outside. Not outside. It's out in the corridor. And when you play a game like Warhammer, like, Warhammer has a lot of bikers. The Space Marines all have bikers. The Orcs all have bikers. The Chaos all have bikers. Eldar have jet bikes, which is not really the same thing. Um, Gene Stealers have bikers. Um, the Caradon Overlords have grav bikes, uh, which is a tribute to their original, their original squat buddies. Like it, there is a lot of them in there, but none of them feel like motorbikes at all. Like not even vaguely. They're just miniatures that travel faster than other things. That that's all it is, and that's fine. Because and because this is not a criticism. It's not what Warhammer is about. It's not supposed to be what Warhammer is about. They didn't make a bike game. Um, but I wanted to make a bike game. And as someone that rides a motorbike, I wanted to I wanted to do something that nobody else was doing. Or at least from what I could see, nobody else was doing. Um, there's an interview with I don't remember who it was. Um, uh, but like innovation in the tabletop industry, if there ever has been like a really big change. It's been from somebody doing something that nobody else had done before. Games Workshop, literally, nobody else was doing it at the time. Um, I mean, you could say like they definitely borrowed from a lot of people, and they did. Like they, they borrowed a lot of their ideas from other people, but they made them into ideas of their own and did something different with them, which is why it's their own creation. Um, you can make the same argument for Star Wars. It became really big because it was doing something nobody else was really doing. Does that mean that I'm an innovator? Well, no. I mean, I would argue that I'm not really the person that should be answering that question. But I would, I, I want to always strive to be in, to be doing that. Um, I don't want to just, well, I just want to make a Warhammer alternative. And that way people that get bored with Warhammer will buy my thing. Well, I don't really want to do that because A, there's already 500 other people out there already doing that. And B, if the only thing that's interesting about your product is the fact that it's an alternate to Warhammer, then congratulations, you're advertising Warhammer as well. Uh, it, that's a big problem. Like some of the larger indie companies, you will notice, don't do that anymore. Um, nine or ten years ago when I had this idea, I looked at a lot of what the indie scene was doing. And honestly... Nobody had ever really done motorbike gangs before. Uh, it's not to say that, I mean, Car Wars was certainly a thing that had existed. Um, I mean, Games Workshop had Gorka Morka, which is like a racing thing, but it's not the same thing. There's certainly been board games that's looked at them. Uh, I mean, there is a Sons of Anarchy board game, but there's nobody that's really done it in the way that I had in my head. Uh, I had on fairly early on that, well, one of the things that I could do was to make speed and turning as part of the game. Uh, that would involve trying to keep your stress levels under check and so forth. I think I was calling it distraction at the time of the original video. Uh, or I was going back and forth, I think. I was using them interchangeably. Uh, whereas now it's very much it's stress. Because it kind of represents the stress of the person riding the bike and the stress on the bike itself. Uh, but one of the very early ideas I had was to design my own version of the X-Wing templates. I had that idea nine or ten years ago. Um, because that, in my head, made sense for a motorbike. Um, I kind of picked some numbers randomly and got a friend to kind of work them up, and they actually work in the scale that I want the game to be in. I got really, really lucky with that. Uh, I picked three inches, I picked five inches, and I picked seven inches. And they all turn at a 90 degree angle. And I got them to design it so that the inch marks were actually on the thing so that you don't have to make the full 90 degree. If you want to, only want to turn like a 45 degree angle, then you only turn the amount to get yourself to the angle that you want to be at. As opposed to in Gaslands, you have to do the full template. And if in, in X-Wing, you have to pick the right template and so on and so forth. A lot of the ideas I had... I wanted it to be. I wanted it to feel like it was all risk versus reward. 
Now, th this game is still in development. Unlike the original video, at this point, I'm fairly confident in saying that it is a game at this point. It's just not a finished game. Um, there's definitely some solid elements there, and this is definitely something that I can work on. Uh, what else has changed since then? If you've been following the podcast, you'll be knowing that I've been painting up some miniatures for this. Most of them fairly roughly, if I'm honest. Like They're all speed paint and contrast paint. They were just done very, very quickly because all they are are prototypes, for, not prototypes. All they are is for playtesting. They're all from other games, for example. So they're, like, they're not something that I'm doing. I haven't created miniatures of my own yet. That's something I would like to do at some point, but that's a problem for future Jason when future Jason gets to a point where he needs to start looking at that now. Um, what's the goal for the game eventually? I, I, I would like this to be an actual product of mine that I can offer. Um, that probably would mean that I would have to go to Kickstarter or something at some stage. I'm not at that point yet, and no, that's not the reason for this video. This video is exactly what I said it is at the start. It's a development update. It's just a blog about how things have gone. Um, since the game, so since that original video, there is now guns implemented into the game. Um, one of the things I wanted different about guns in this game is I didn't want this to be a shooty game. It's inspired by games like Road Rash and Road Redemption, which are video games. Road Rash was like a huge classic back in the day. Uh, and if you haven't played either of them, like Road Redemption is the modern recreation of it, basically, and what I would recommend that you check out. It's genuinely really, really good. Um, and like one of the things about that game is like the guns are very lethal, but they're really hard to use. Um, and if you talk to anybody in the military, that's actually the way guns are on the back of a motorbike. They are really hard to use so i wanted to implement it that way um because it makes them special and it means that if there isn't very many of them then if they're more lethal but harder to, it it gives them a reason to be special um at the way that i have it implement the way that i have it right now is you can have one gun for every two riders that may actually go back even further it may go one for every three uh, or like at this stage, it's one third of your army. It might go back to one quarter. Uh, but when you're talking about five or six, maybe seven riders, that's like you're looking at one, really, or two. So it's something that's very... It's a, something that I'm still working on the balance, and that's something I'm really right in the middle of right now. Um, the first phase of testing was the core mechanics. And that was just getting the game, or at least what was hopefully going to be a game at the time, in front of as many people as I could, and just to find out, is this idea fun? The feedback I got was fairly universal, honestly. Everybody knew that it wasn't finished and it wasn't ready, but as a core concept, everybody agreed that, no, there, there's actually something to this. You should keep going. Um, phase two introduced guns and it introduced wounds, and it kind of... I put everybody, because in the first test, it was just like, once people were out, they were out. There was no wounds. There was no nothing. It was just, well, because it was just, I just get as many rounds as I could as quickly as I could. They were going like 20, 30 minutes. And it was like three pieces aside because it's all I had done up at that point. Um, phase two, I pushed that up to five by five. And I increased the size of the table. It's now a game that takes place on a four by four board, where originally it was three by three. Uh, mainly because, honestly, it, it felt like we needed more space just because of the way that it was playing. And I'm really, really happy with that that change. It feels very good at, at that size. I would argue that if you're going to be having more than two players, you would want to go up to a 6x4. Uh, I don't see that happening for the main game, though. Um, I could see people doing that just for fun. Uh, it wouldn't be something that I'd be saying you have to do as part of the rule set, at least not at this stage. I see no reason for the game to have to go that large, unless you've got multiple people. Um, phase 3 introduced the actual factions, so that it, the factions themselves felt different. Um, so we've got a group called Hades, and that's a group of... That's a motorbike gang, exactly how you think of them. They're all on cruisers, 
uh, in the, in our world, that would be Harley Davidsons and Indians, your loud, large American style motorbikes um, that are falling out of fashion. Actually, there is another group called the called the Komodo. Um, this is kind of based very, very loosely on like the ideas, at least in pop culture, of the Triad and the Yakuza. None of these factions are actually based on culture, as in country or where people are born and so forth. It's just ideas of how factions are formed. Um, so like, there's going to be like mixed races and mixed sexes and ever like it's it's a completely different world. Um, but like that's because when it comes to sports bikes in movies with gangs, it tends to be those groups in the stereotype. I've been using the word stereotype when it comes to the factions in this game very, like, pretty much from the start, and it's very deliberate. I'm not meaning in the terms of, well, this is a nasty stereotype, but I don't mean it in that sense. I just mean, like, pop culture stereotypes. Um, like, your cruisers generally tend to be big, tough guys, big, rough, and that's not necessarily the way it is in real life. Uh, but it's the way it's always portrayed in movies. Like the whole point of Terminator 2 when Arnold Schwarzenegger walks into the bikey bar is that at that point in time, these guys were supposed to be the toughest of the tough. And then he just ruins the lot of them. That's like literally the point of the scene. Um, but the Yakuza in this, uh, like it's very much supposed to be like that culture of once you're in, you're in, and da 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 da. Uh, but the, like, they're sports bike riders. So I will be taking inspiration. Well, I am taking inspiration from the sports bikes that we ride and the culture that's around that as well. Uh, because my experience in riding is going to form into this as well. Uh, the last of the main factions is Mutiny. And they are based roughly, loosely on like your Mad Max tropes, punk rock. Um, goth a little bit not really though um it's more like it's more your punk rock and and mad max kind of a little bit of both but also neither at the same time and kind of it meets in the middle somewhere ironically like storyline wise the more that the group has developed the more they've become more of a cult more than anything else honestly uh, like there's this big charismatic leader that draws you in these were the guys that were responsible for the downfall of the city and now they're kind of like, will the city fail to protect you? Come and join our family. Because nobody knows that it was them. Of course they don't. Um, and they're all on trail bikes. And so I take from your trail bike stereotypes. Um, there will be like the law in this. Because if it's in the middle of a city and all of these gangs are fighting, why aren't the police turning up? Well, part of that is because, well, the police are kind of gone. Uh, but there's still remnants of them around and remnants of the city government desperately trying to claw some control back. Um, I could go into the story, but I think I'll leave that for another video. But as far as like 12 months of development from someone that's never done this before, like I've never done this before. I'm, I'm really proud of how far I've come. Like the, the rule set, actually, there's actually a rule set here. Um, it's not final. There's a lot of changes that need to be made. There's still significant changes being made every time I play it. That's the reason why I play test it. Phase four is still a little ways off, but that'll be where I start trying to create individual characters with individual stats. Um, like there's, there's statistics that characters will have that aren't implemented yet, like protection, for example. If somebody's wearing a helmet and some armor, then hey, Maybe they should be harder to hit. Uh, but hey, there's some weapons that will just go straight through that. If I hit your helmet with a hammer, it's probably going to go straight through the hammer. Especially if it's a really cheap one. Um, there, are some, there are some weapons that are exclusive to some factions. That's just being rolled out now. Uh, the Komodo, for example, are the only ones that have swords. Uh, the Mutiny are the only ones that have a monkey fist, which is... A naval weapon, actually. Um, it's a really nasty thing. People put really large ball bearings or eight balls inside of them and kill people. It's really nasty. It's not a nice way to go. Um, there's chains, just like in Road Rash. That's exclusive to Hades at this stage. 
Um, most likely, the law is going to be the only ones that have access to a sniper rifle. Um, and that is definitely something that I need to put more time into. The law have not been implemented at this stage. Before I get to that stage, I will be testing the actual invasion mechanics, which is where the law turns up and tries to break up your fight. I have a lot written on how that works, but it's yet to be imp implemented and tested. Uh, that will be the next phase, but that's still quite a few games off at this point. So, but like I said, it's in the original video, I said three or four times that, look, this is not a game yet, but I hope it will become one. This definitely is a game at this point. It's just a game that's not finished. Uh, how much more work needs to be done? It's hard to say. Uh, there's a game open day coming for the Nunawading Wargamers Association, and I've put myself up to host a table there if they accept me. Uh, that will definitely be a day where I'll get a lot of people across and get a lot of feedback. Um, I've also put myself forward for PAX Australia as someone to do playtesting there. I don't know if I'll get into that or not. Um, I'm certainly not. That's certainly going to be a much harder one to get into, I suspect. I am going to PAX regardless. It's just a matter of whether I get to bring Entropy City with me or not. Um, I'm really, really happy with how far the game has come. Um, in my initial video, I set myself a goal of within 12 months, I wanted to be able to playtest it. And I have been at that point a long time ago. I'm two or three steps past that at this point. So I'm really, really happy with how it comes. My goal for the next 12 months is that hopefully this time next year, I am getting to the point of individual stats and actually pointing, pointing things up and that I will have actually started tr trying to actually develop my own range of miniatures. Uh, and some artwork for the actual game. But there is some artwork that, well, there is some artwork that I've tried to create. I'm not an artist by any means. I, I, I'm i not fishing for compliments whenever I say this. Like, there's quite a bit of art I've tried to do. Like, I keep on saying that I'm pretending to be an artist because I literally am. Like, the faction logos, I actually really like my faction logos, but they're not good. I just like what they represent. They are placeholders until I can get something better done. I've done artwork for road signs. I've done artwork for billboards. All of this is placeholder, but all stuff that I'll need to get artwork from at some point. I've got an image in my head of what I would love the final rulebook to look like, as far as cover art is concerned. Uh, it's definitely going to be featuring somebody being knocked off their bike by a, by a lead pipe or a baseball bat or something, uh, because at that point, how could you not have that image? Um, there was a piece of art going around on the internet for a while where it featured like 12 or 15 or 20 different um rock um references so like there was queen in there and there were, um, nine inch nails was on it and all these other things uh, and i would love to kind of do something similar to that where it's like it's just a street and like the more you look at the street the more like that the war is going on and so on and so forth that's that's what I would love to do, or, or I'd love to create a piece of artwork like that, and then just a certain part of it is part of the logo, and then maybe the, like there's a full-on spread as a poster that it gets included as like an extra or something. I, I don't know. Like, legit, I don't know, because I'm, I'm not there. And I'm not an artist. This is something I will have to get help for. I may have to get help for the miniatures too. I don't know. Uh, one of the big things for this, obviously, and, and I've known this from the start, like, I'm someone that's on a, like a fairly middle income. Like, I don't have a lot of money. Um, and, and this is not a cry for that either. Like, you have no way of supporting me on this. Like, that there's, I mean, by all means, like, if you want to support the Patreon, obviously, yes, by all means. But that does not help me. It helps the podcast. Um, I'm not setting up any way that you can donate towards this. There are no products that you can buy for this at this point. The only thing I ask is that you follow this journey. I'm going to start trying to do videos like this more often. I'm hoping that they actually start getting some views. Um, because like th this is something I'm very passionate about. And this is something that the more I get into it, a lot of the other games that I want to play are all taking a back seat at this stage. All of them have become secondary to this. Because if I don't treat them like that, 
this won't happen. It's just a fact of life. And something that I've realized, like, this is something I hear from developers all the time, that you don't get the chance to play anything else. But I understand it now. Um, I mean, I kind of always understood that, but I, I actually, I know how that feels now. Um, like, we're right in the middle of 10th edition. Um, and, like, whilst there is, I, I have mixed feelings on 10th edition right now. Uh, but even if I was hyped, I would be avoiding trying to buy anything for, for it. Because, quite frankly, I can't afford the time. Because it's, some, it's time that should be spent on this. Um, I have tons of other projects. But that's all time that I should be spending on this. Plus, I have a real-life job. Plus, I have social things. Um, Lord knows I keep expecting people to turn around and ask me to stop talking about my game. None of my friends have done that. They've all been extremely supportive, and I thank all of you for that. Uh, there is a Facebook group. Uh, if you reach out to me, I can invite you to it because the group is a private one. Uh, it's filled with uh, people from our Patreon that have shown interest, friends that have shown interest, like just generally people that have been helping me on this journey. Um, so if if you're wanting to get involved, I'm more than happy to invite any of you to that. There is an exclusive channel on our Discord for our Patreon. Um, that is where everything I'm doing at this stage gets shared first. Um, I, I've been saying this right from the start. Showing everything to our Patreon for getting tabled will not be the way it continues forever. It's continue. It started as just to say, very much a thank you to our community for actually supporting us. And like on the Discord, the, the Patreon, that they really do support us really, really nicely. And it's not just because they want to see things early. Hell, most of them don't look at the videos until they go live. And I know this for a fact because I can see the watch count doesn't go up. Um. And look, if anything, that only means that their support means more. Um, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. Like, the, like I said, the exclusives on the Entropy City stuff won't continue forever. For two reasons. A, like it's not actually part of getting tabled. It's a personal project. Uh, and secondly, I will have to start getting the marketing train going if I get to a point where there needs to be a marketing train. So... I will have to start doing stuff exclusively for that at some point. Um, how I do that is a problem. Future Jason. For now, I hope you've enjoyed my little ramble. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, let me know what you would like to hear more about. I haven't talked anything about the story at this point. I haven't spoken in depth about the rules themselves. Um... I can create some videos about how certain elements are working in the game at this stage. Uh, I haven't done a lot of play, like how to plays on the channel because it's something that I struggled with on our, on my very small budget. Uh, but for this, I will find a way to make it work if you want to see it. Um, You've made it through to the end of another video. Your next mission is to hit subscribe and comment down below. If you'd like to reach out to the team, Consider doing that, getting tabled at gmail.com. Consider subscribing to our Patreon. For only $2 a month, you get early access to almost every single video that we do. Our most active social media is facebook.com slash getting tabled. It's where you'll find everything first. There's also a Discord. There's an invite on screen right now. If you type that in, it'll give you instant access. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at getting tabled. It's not the most active, but it's something we're trying to use more all the time. Come and check out Jason the Bruce at Twitch. He does both video game and hobby content. And of course, without question, play more.